Hello, and welcome to another edition of Door County Today. I'm your host, Paul Renier of Door County Nature and Travel. For many visitors, fall is a special time on the peninsula. The crowds are gone and winter hasn't yet arrived. The entire county is yours to explore. Come with us today as we learn about the Door County Land Trust, an organization dedicated to the preservation of Door County's unique natural landscapes. Later in the show, we'll meet with Norbert Bly, the county's renowned writer. We are in actually a historical building, yes. This building was built in the late 1800s as a town hall. We are in Liberty Grove Old Town Hall. The logs that were used to build this building were brought over on ice from Michigan. The former owner had approached us and proposed for us to buy it and when we went into the lower level we were thinking of a coffee food fair. It took us uh, five years to get it going. Um, it was the pro the, basically the project has to be downscale. We had an idea to put a bread oven and um, have a full blown bakery but it has to be scaled down to a simple coffee shop and uh, so we the space uh, defines the purpose. It works well as a, um, an, an extension as a shop, a social place to be, and it complements the shop really well. We offer a very simple menu. We have a um, bakery made from scratch daily. We, we, we try to keep things simple, but bake fresh daily is kind of one of our motto. Uh, we don't go into extravagant um, baking, but um, freshness is definitely a part of the project. Uh, we make sandwiches and um, soups. In the same uh, spirit, we try to keep it simple and make it daily. Try to get a creative menu and um, we have a vegetarian menu. But we have a lot of um, cheeses uh, and uh, different uh, options that I think are very delicious. Joel and I worked for a resort company for a number of years and had, been, had the opportunity to live in lovely places all over the world. And when we had our, our son Sam, we decided that we needed to be closer to family and in Wisconsin this was the place that we felt was where we wanted to be. What I like about Door County the most is uh, the change of pace which um, there is never any monotony. Um, the countryside changes, the people changes, the pace change, everything changes and things that's what makes it interesting. It just uh, the, the secret of it is that you have to actually be ready for each step of it. So in the summer you have to enjoy the, the craziness of it and then so you can actually enjoy the, the quietness of it in the winter. We um, focus on outdoor nature and travel. We carry things that are easy to take care of. So I do try to focus on natural fibers and environmentally friendly fibers. And our cottons are organic. I only have one line that is not, does not have organic offerings. A couple of my lines use a polyester that's recycled and recyclable. It is important to me when I'm doing my buying, um, the environmental effect of the clothing that we have in here. We rent snowshoes and cross-country skis. That's the root of our business, my parents starting with cross-country skis. When I um, met my wife, she introduced me to uh, cross-country skiing with actually my father-in-law, who is the one who started the business of um, renting skiing in Manitowoc. And uh, so I was introduced to cross-country ski when I came to Door County. Uh, so I'm not a cross-country skier, a born cross-country skier. We have a space for ski rental and uh, snowshoe rental, which is a part of Ecology's Potent Base Camp. We do rent ski and snowshoe for the a modest amount of $12 a day, and our skis and uh, snowshoe are actually um, great. We rent uh, Alpina skis and uh, Red Feather um, snowshoes. And if you have all skis that you're using sitting in your garage, come in, try the new one. It really makes a huge difference. Uh, you'll see the comfort of the shoes. It will keep your feet warm and uh, get you going um, and enjoy yourself much more in the snow. Us, like other people, have chosen to live here because of the, um, well, the beauty, the unique um, landscape, but also the people. It's a um, small community, but people, many people who have been elsewhere have chosen to live up here. We have a beautiful culture, but yet you have a small town feeling. You can go into the post office, you go into the bank, and you know these are people who are your neighbors and your friends. And I think the pull for Door County first was probably it's the landscape. It, we both thought it was a beautiful area, but as we are living here, what keeps us here probably, I would have to say, is the community. I think what I like the most about Door County is actually the, the pace we're having through the year. 
Uh, actually, I, I love this time of the year, January, and February, when it's quiet, and quieter, I should say. And, and it's beautiful. I mean, the, we have lots of days with blue skies and um, snow on the ground, and it's just a gorgeous place to be. This is definitely a repeat destination. It, this is a place that you want to come back to. The, the way to enjoy Dorkan is to, is true, to come back as much as you can and uh, enjoy the different uh, seasons and the different time of the year and you will see, we'll be able to compare the difference and discover some things that you, in the summer, you, you will not have the time to discover. Hi, I'm Paul Renier, and welcome to another edition of The Natural Door. Today we're going to learn about the Door County Land Trust and their role in preserving the unique natural landscapes of Door County, like Kangaroo Lake Preserve. The mission of the Land Trust, we protect lands um, that have scenic beauty, the open spaces, the farmlands, the open lands that people are very connected to, as well as protecting the ecologically important lands up here. Not only do we work with landowners to protect them, but then we have the long-term role of stewarding and opening them up for hiking and the public to use. And one other part of our mission, obviously, is education. We all come here because of what we have up here to offer, what, this, what the county has to offer. It's a beautiful place. It has uh, bluffs and water and, and all kinds of things that uh, everybody likes, uh, especially if you come from the city. Door County contains it all. It contains just a, a wonderful place for people to step in for a weekend and visit. But it has a very rich and deep conservation ethic. And the people here uh, practice it uh, at a, at a world-class level. The Land Trust provides opportunities for a lot of people to get out and explore these places that are really more off the beaten path. We have about 26 preserves, like the Three Springs Preserve here in Sister Bay, throughout the county from Washington Island all the way down to Southern Door. So people have an opportunity, they're all open for hiking, um, hunting is available on most of these preserves, cross-country skiing, um, any type of nature related activity. There's two ways of acquiring lands that the land trust has under its control. One is to actually own the land, the other is to acquire or have uh, work out conservation easements with willing partners. In 2008 the land trust had the opportunity to purchase this property and at that time it was the largest undeveloped private owned tract left. So this is one of our premier, very large acquisitions and preserves. Um, we have a total of about 3,500 acres that we own and manage, and then the other half of our protected lands are actually still privately owned, and we use a tool called a conservation easement with the landowner. The land trust is really this very effective way for people to take lands that they own and love and preserve them in perpetuity. But people still own these properties. They own the properties. We do not have any particular responsibilities for those properties, except that we have to make sure that the easements are maintained. And that is extremely important, that whatever happens, if people turn them over to their next of kin or, or they sell their properties, the people that acquire the property, the new owners, have to abide by all the land restrictions, the easements that are on that property forever. There's nothing that can change that. The Land Trust also will be engaged in buying land and in fact here at the Bayshore Blufflands they made a leap of faith and they bought a large tract of land and uh, so in addition to holding conservation easements they will get involved as the primary owner of the land and, and buy land for, for conservation purposes too. The Bayshore Blufflands down by Carlsville, we've got about 400 acres down there. The Ship Canal down by Sturgeon Bay is another uh, I think it's like 350 acres. We've done a lot of protection on Washington Island. We were able to purchase almost the northern two-thirds of Little Lake over the past six years. It had an old cabin on it and right after we made the purchase I started getting calls from Norway and uh, Carleton University about the Veblen cabin. And we found out this very famous economist Thorsten Veblen had done a lot of his writing 
out on this property in this little cabin. And they wanted to see if we could partner with them to take it off the property and move it over to the Jacobson Museum and then put together a whole historic educational piece on Thorsten Veblen. I need We've got these beautiful properties and to make them more accessible is more important than anything else. We have built uh, trails and each one of these preserves we have now has a kiosk where you can see a map and usually a little handout that explains the property, gives a little historical background and describes the property and why it was preserved. There are many lands out there that are in need of stewards, but they don't quite meet the test of preservation by a land trust. And for those lands, landowners are instrumental in helping out. We we're very selective about what kind of properties we want to get into, uh, but certainly there, there are properties that have universal interest, usually open spaces or scenic places, uh, places with particular ecological value. We're surrounded by people who might be experts in dragonflies or herps or uh, plant ecology and uh, just always uh, enriched by the, the real big community of, of people with environmental understanding. There's a lot of open space up here and beautiful places and that's what we're trying to maintain. It's really wonderful to see people embracing this mission and really wanting to see us continue to do this great work up here. We just want people to have the, uh, the chance to, to know a, a spot that they might think is, is pretty special too. I'm Maurice Redman. We're at the Settlement Courtyard Inn in Lavender Spa in Door County, Wisconsin. We offer different kinds of services here. We are primarily massage therapy designed to heal and to relax and rejuvenate. We have a, an Ayurvedic face massage using the Bindi product line, which is all natural. We have, of course, the hot stone massage, which uses heated stones some traditional massage and each massage is designed specifically for you as each massage therapist has learned different techniques that they can draw from and will help you do your healing. We have lovely service called the Feet Retreat which is great for people who are on their feet all day, do sports and uh, it involves steaming of the feet and calves and uh, hitting reflexology pressure points, lavender salt scrub, and it's, it's just lovely. You feel like you're floating. We also have a service called the Mind Melt, which is a half an hour service designed for people who don't have a lot of time, but want to start the, the relaxation process as quickly as possible, and uses a variety of hot and cold towels and lavender essential oils, and really helps bring you back to your center so you can get on with your vacation and leave your worries behind. A lot of the work is couples massage. Um, we do a lot of packages at our hotel, encouraging couples to take that extra step, relax in the Whirlpool suite and they get breakfast in bed. They also get that relaxing time together. It's a very fun and healing experience, a chance for people to be together and relax together and it's become very popular. We have a lot of fun here. Um, we get a lot of, you know, uh, girlfriends that come together. Women always feel really comfortable and very safe here. And we love to laugh. We take customer service to another level. We want to make sure people really, truly enjoy themselves and are comfortable and happy here. And I'm also partnering with New Leaf Acupuncture, which is right next door at the settlement shops. We're putting together packages together so that people can do additional healing with acupuncture and massage. People come here to commune with nature. You have the water, we have these beautiful forests and parks, all the silent sports, the biking, the hiking. So people come here to get out, get fresh air, get sunshine, and feel good. And for people who, um, who are battling health issues or are feeling run down, um, there are so many options to help relieve the pain and help 
boost the immunity and rejuvenate the body while they're here. Acupuncture is one of them. It is a complete medical system in and of itself. I can treat pain, which most people are familiar with, common colds, respiratory disorders, heart conditions, injuries, breaks, sprains. Um, we can help promote faster healing and relieve pain. All kinds of um, muscle pain, muscle aches, joint pain, arthritis. Basically, whatever you got, I have a point for it. Let's say, for example, a uh, patient comes in with headaches. In acupuncture, to choose the correct points, we have to consider not only the symptoms that are manifesting, but the body condition. We're always treating not just the, the branch, the, the symptoms that somebody's feeling, but the root. We correct the body condition so that the symptoms will stop popping out. Cupping is a therapeutic procedure in which a vacuum is created with a glass cup okay. and applied to the skin, usually on the back. It's usually on a large muscle group. It's most commonly used for muscle spasms, muscle tension, and musculoskeletal pain. What we do is we apply that, that glass cup. The vacuum is created within the cup and it actually pulls the skin up into the cup. We'll leave the cup sit for five to 20 minutes. In that time, it draws all the blood and interstitial body fluids up into that skin. Uh, it relaxes the muscles. So when we apply that vacuum and pull, pull the muscle, we're stretching the muscle out pulling out all those adhesions back into the circulation to be flushed out. It triggers the body to reform those healthy, natural muscle fibers. People come here to get out, get fresh air, get sunshine and feel good. And for people who, um, who are battling health issues or are feeling run down, um, there are so many options to help relieve the pain and help boost the immunity and rejuvenate the body while they're here. Uh, my name is Nor Bly, and uh, I'm a writer. Been living here since 1969. Came from Chicago. I wrote fiction and nonfiction. I came to the county with the idea of uh, leaving all that behind me. Uh, although I had to exist by, uh, via Chicago for at least 10 years by driving back and forth and doing stories and continuing to freelance, but really to focus then more on books was the reason I came here. This was a nice, quiet place uh, to work. I had to then slowly adjust to life here and uh, my whole life as a writer. I have a, a voice and an attitude and appreciation of people that uh, causes them to open up almost immediately and talk. If you can get people to trust you, and either they see that immediately or they don't, and if they do, they'll tell you more than you want to know. When I would do a profile of a person, I would always try to not just talk about the person, but tell a story about them. Tell a story about my coming to meet him or whatever. You want this thing to say something. Make this life exhibit some sense of meaning, you know. I really try to take word for word what a person said. I, I don't fashion any of the conversation. Uh, I don't edit. Whatever was down there uh, is a revelation of who that person was. As I began to write about the place, my attraction then was to, to get as close to the person who was still farming, the person who was still had an orchard. I think the first one was my next door neighbor, Charlie Root who was in his 80s at that time and had, I think, only left the county once in his entire life. But he became my really close friend. And then uh, the Carlsons across the road, and I, I always call him Pa, 
and he in fact worked on this place. He, you know, he cut all the lumber for this coop of mine where I'm in now. But Pa Carlson and Charlie, these were some of the first people. Uh, and Charlie would be the epitome of um, the old timer, uh, rough life, uh, just eking a living out on a small piece of land. After I had maybe five or six, I began scoping the, the county itself, thinking, who are the women that would be interesting? Uh, women who might represent a real sense of independence. A Chick Peterson that I got to know, and he became a very good friend of mine and has done all the covers on my books and many illustrations as well. Al Johnson, uh, how could you do a story about business in this county without uh, centering maybe that story about him and what he was able to build there? The, the work then uh, became an accumulation of these stories into a book, uh, an expression of these people and why they were here, what they were doing here in the kind of lives that, that they led. When we come in here, uh, writers, artists, photographers, uh, and we see the county in, in, through different eyes, uh, does the local see what we see, you know, or are they just so enmeshed in what their life is that they're oblivious to all this? I can almost hear the quiet. At times I think I live in a poem. Early walks toward the lake at the end of the road find me merging into solemn woods, into fields on fire in morning light, drifting toward shimmering lake water, waiting in repose, for my approach. I have been trying to define this place for more than 40 years, my adopted landscape. I came to believe this peninsula was all about light 10 years after I settled in 1969 and continue to study my new setting since then in notes, essays, and books, trying to acclimate myself to a rural culture utterly foreign to me. I walked and walked the immediate area around my old farmhouse those first years always a stranger in my own domain. What is this? Is this home? The writer at large attempting to settle in once again, acquainting himself with the nearby fields, the woods, the stone fences, the inland waters, Lake Michigan and Green Bay shoreline. I drove the back roads north and south, up and down the peninsula, crossed it in all kinds of weather in all seasons, and I never tired of all it offered. Forty years later, I remain in place, though looking at everything from different angles. There is something about this peninsula I still need to know. The land is always telling me something, and I am trying hard to concentrate, to listen, to get it right. Reading the landscape at the beginning was a new and very different book to comprehend, to learn, to translate in one's own words. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to come back often to find out more about Door County's history, landscapes, businesses, and people. I'm Paul Renier for Door County Today. See you next time.